Hey everyone, Mitch here. It's been a little while since the original Fog video tutorial came out and a lot has changed since then. So in this video, I'm just going to re-go over all the stuff from the last video and we're going to look at all the things that are new. All right, let's get straight into it. Uh, you'll notice here that I actually have two windows of our already open. Uh, the first one here is just my uh, GM view and over here I have a player view. And the way I accomplish this is that here the GM view is uh, loaded into a game and then I have uh, in Chrome here an incognito window to the right which is loaded into the same game and that will act as a player. The reason I'm doing this is that when you are creating fog it'll allow the GM to see through the fog so you can easily place it better but that means that you won't be able to see what the final result looks like. So in order to see the final result here and to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to have a player view on the right hand side just while I kind of go over the features of the fog tool. Okay, first things first, uh, to get access to the fog tool we can click this icon here or we can hit F on our keyboard. Now we have a few options with the fog tool so I'm just going to go over every one of them. First of all, we have the pen tool here and this allows us to draw fog shapes by clicking into a map and then we can uh, create any shape we want and then once we're done we can either hit this tick mark to accept or you can hit escape on your keyboard to cancel the shape. I'm just going to hit the tick mark here and you'll see that I've created a fog shape here on the left and on the right in our player view you'll notice that this fog shape is fully blacked out. Okay, the next thing you might notice is that all these uh, sort of purplish lines that are coming up when I'm hovering over when using the pen tool here, these are our guides and these show up when we have uh, grid snapping enabled and this is basically showing us where our point will be once we click down. The next option we have is the rectangle option. This is pretty simple, it just allows us to click and drag a rectangle fog shape. Alright, the next option we have is the brush option here. And this allows us to freehand draw a shape like this. The brush tool here is great for drawing uh, outlines for things like caves and things like that, whereas uh, the rectangle tool or the pen tool is a lot more suited to indoor environments. Okay, the next option we have is the toggle option here. So we can click that. And this allows us to toggle the visibility of a fog shape on or off. So you see here I have this rectangle in the middle, if I click that it'll highlight for me and then when I release my mouse it will disappear from the player view on the right. But here in the GM view you'll see that there are these uh, transparent striped lines and this is to show to the GM that hey you, you've toggled this shape off so the players won't be able to see it. But say for later that maybe the players leave the room or for whatever reason we want to make that shape uh, hidden again, we can then click it with the toggle tool enabled and it will turn back on. Okay, the next option we have is the erase option here. So when I click that, uh, if I go and again select a fog shape again and release my mouse, it will completely erase the shape. And so that means that uh, I can't toggle it back on, it's completely gone. And again, it is gone from the player view as well. Uh, the one way we can get that back is if we either undo or control Z on the keyboard and we have undone our deletion of that shape. The next option is the cut fog option here and this is a toggle so if we enable that by clicking it here or by hitting C on the keyboard we are now in the cut fog mode and what that means is whenever we draw a shape here, say a rectangle here, you'll first notice that the shape is colored red and this means that we're cutting away from the shape and when I release my mouse here, instead of adding a new fog shape, it has cut out from the square here. And you can see this in the player view by seeing that we now have a hollow square. When shapes are cut out, they're not fully deleted from a fog, instead they're toggled off. And this means that when we're cutting out, say, rooms, that we can easily cut rooms out of maybe a, a larger fog area and then be able to toggle them off and on as we see fit. Okay, the next option we have here is the layer option. So here I'm just going to disable fog cutting and with uh, layers disabled as it is by default, 
you'll notice that if I try and draw, say, another fog shape here, another circle on top of this circle here, that when I let go, I am unable to overlap these fog shapes. And this is nice because it means that we can be uh, rather messy with creating fog and not have to worry about precisely lining up our shapes because we can just overlap them and then it would make sure that we don't have a, a lot of overlapping shapes that are harder to delete or toggle. If we instead enable multi-layer fog, then this is not the case. So here, if I draw a, another circle on top of these, you'll see that now I have a full layer of, of fog here. And so if I was to toggle this off, we don't see any difference on the player view because there are still other fog shapes behind this one that we just toggled off. Okay, I'm just gonna undo this here. There we go. And the last fog option we have is the fog preview here. So if I click that, you'll see now that my GM view actually gives us an exact representation of what the player will see. So this option means that it's not necessary to have a player view like this all the time when you're creating fog, as you can simply just toggle the preview off and on when you want to see what the player's view looks like. Okay, that is an overview of all the tools you have available when creating fog in Alma Radio. In the next section, I want to look at uh, getting a map and actually adding fog to an entire map, and we'll see what that kind of workflow is like. Okay, so here we have a pirate tavern map by Chepeku. Before we go ahead and fog the map, there's a little bit of a workflow tip that I get asked about a lot, and that is how do I quickly change between, say, the fog tool and the move tool? because you'll be wanting to zoom in, add fog, and move around. So to do that, if we're in, say, the fog tool, or this even works in the drawing tool, or any other tool for that matter, uh, once we're in the fog tool, we can then hold spacebar. And once we're holding spacebar, we'll be in the move tool, so we can then move around and drag the map. And once we release spacebar, we'll go back to the fog tool. And this workflow is nice because then we can quickly add a fog shape, and then say, move over here, add another shape, and it makes the workflow of adding fog a lot quicker. All right, with that out of the way, I'm just gonna undo those changes, and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit here. So the workflow I'm gonna go with this map for is since pretty much all of it is covered by fog, I'm actually gonna cover the entire map in fog, and then we're gonna cut bits out as we go, okay. And the easiest way to cover an entire map in fog is by selecting the rectangle tool here. And then in the top left, our guides will show us that we're in the top left and we'll just drag from there to the bottom right here. Okay, now the entire map is covered in fog. And to see that, we can enable the fog preview or there is a shortcut with the F key. So I'm just gonna hit that and we'll see our entire map is covered in fog. Okay, next I wanna cut out areas of this place where I think our players are going to go. In this case, we're prepping our map ahead of time, but this can actually all be done while the players are exploring the map, and you can cut uh, shapes out as they go, and you don't have to be as uh, structured as this. First thing I'm going to cut out is this little tavern bar area here. To do that, I noticed that most of the walls are kind of straight, so here I'm probably going to be using the pen tool here. Okay. So if I was to grab this pen tool and then start clicking away, you'll notice that we're snapping to these grid cells. So if I grab here, 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 oops, and here you can see I've made a little mistake here. Uh, in order to undo a point you've added with the, with the pen tool, I can just hit the backspace key here and I will remove the last point we added. Okay, so here I'm just clicking away along here and this is working pretty well, but you'll notice that some of these areas here are kind of off the grid and this grid snapping is almost getting in our way as we're trying to draw the lines here for this shape. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cancel drawing this shape. I'm gonna uh, reshow my sidebars here and then in the settings, so this little cog icon here, I'm gonna click that. And here we have a grid snapping sensitivity. So what this does is it actually sets the how sensitive our grid snapping is. So a value of one is it'll always snap to the grid and a value is zero saying that we'll never snap to the grid, which is what we want in this case, as we kind of, this grid is kind of getting in the way of at least this, this area of the fog. Okay, with that set to zero, I'll exit this settings menu here, and now we can continue drawing our shape. And you'll see that we don't have the guides anymore because grid snapping is pretty much disabled. 
Okay, I'm drawing my shape here and it's a little bit easier now that I can just follow these lines directly. Here we go, up here. And then while I'm drawing this, I can just hit spacebar again and move my menu up here. Okay, there we are. Keep on drawing this. And as I'm drawing this, I've noticed that, hmm, we want to cut out of this fog shape, but we don't have cut enabled. So I could delete this fog shape uh, and enable cut with my mouse cursor here. But I've kind of done a little bit of work. So what I'm going to do instead is just hit the C key on my keyboard and we'll change it to the cut mode. Okay, zooming out a little bit just to make this a little bit quicker. I'm going to grab these points here. Here we go. There, 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 there. And then I could click the done button here or instead I can hit enter on my keyboard and we've now cut out our shape. So if I move over here and enable for pretty view, you'll see that our little tavern area here has been cut out. Okay, the next little thing I'm gonna handle is these two little uh, rooms here. So this one, I'm gonna use the pen tool as well to just drag here, here. And you'll notice that when I'm inside this fog shape that I've cut out, I'm gonna be pretty messy with it and not really care about the lines because I know that we have the single layer option enabled. So when I hit enter here, our two shapes here will be perfectly uh, resting up against each other. Here's one and here's the other. Great, so I can preview that and we're looking pretty good. The other parts of this cavern here are a lot more uh, cavey. So they have a lot more of these uh, curved lines. So in order to kind of handle that the best, I'm actually gonna start using the brush tool here. So we don't have to be extremely accurate here because they're just caves and it doesn't really matter to me, at least if we directly follow these lines exactly. Okay, to cut out this little uh, treasure hold here, I'm just gonna grab my tool, drag around here. All right, looking good. And now say I want this little bay area, I'm just gonna grab this, drag around, and I can kind of overlap here and it'll kind of handle that overlap for us. Great. Let's grab this little uh, hallway here. Here we go. Looking good. Great. Okay, and this little barrel room here is already cut out, so I can just toggle that off. And now moving up here, I'm going to grab this little uh, map room here. Here we go. Okay. And now this kind of back area, I'm just going to quickly follow trace that around. All right, there we go. One little area here. Okay. Maybe I'll grab this little storeroom here. Just kind of trace that around. Okay. And we're looking pretty good. One quick thing I'm going to do here is that I know that maybe our players will enter on this dock side. So I kind of want to split this map in half so the players can't see, you know, the full uh, coastline here when they're on the dock. So in order to do that, I'm just going to kind of split the map here. There we go. Okay, now our little coastline split out. And I'm also going to do the same thing on the right hand side here. Great. Now if I go into the player preview, we'll actually see that, well, everything's revealed because we've just cut it all out, which is not necessarily what we want. So I'm going to go back into the editing tools and click on the toggle. And I'm just going to drag my mouse across all these shapes here. That one, this one, this one, this one, this one. All right. And now if I let go, uh, you'll see that these shapes have been toggled on. So now if I go back into the preview, oops, this one, go back. There we go. All right, so now we have our fully fogged shape. So when our players will load the map, they'll see this. And then as we progress, we can then say toggle this dock area here uh, so the players can see it. And here we have our cutout. Next, when the players enter the room here, we'll toggle that on and the players will see the room. And we can keep on doing this as our players progress through the map. Great. And with that, all of the new parts of the fog tool have been explored. Uh, we've successfully added fog to this pirate cavern map. If you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll uh, see you guys next time.